In this next video of core algorithms, I'm going to be covering the uh, algorithm for accumulation and also the algorithm for average. So it's kind of like a two for one deal in this case. So what I mean by accumulation is that often we want the user to continuously enter values or we want to be able to continuously get values until we get a signal value that tells us to stop. And then usually we want to keep adding those or something like that. So in this example I'm going to show how to continuously add numbers until um, they get a signal value so it's a, a certain type of number that would tell the uh, computer to stop adding them. And then I can show the total of those values and also I'll show you how to get the average of all those values. Okay, so the way we start, and I'm going to just start simply here, is by creating a variable for input. Okay, and then we'll also need another variable for the total. Okay, um, or I can call it the sum. Okay, so the sum of the values. And the sum would start at zero. Okay, then what I would do is I would say see, uh, see out. I'm going to put a prompt here and prompt the user to enter a number. So please enter a number. And then typically you would have um, something like this, a negative number to stop. Okay, so in this case the signal value is going to be that uh, negative number. So once the computer sees a negative number, it's not going to add that and it's just going to it's just going to stop. Okay, so it just says something like that and I like to put a little colon here. There we go. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in the input from the user. And then I'm going to ask if the input is greater than or equal to zero, meaning that it is positive, and it's not the signal value that's going to stop this algorithm, then I'm going to say that the sum plus equals the input. Okay, now what plus equals means is the same as saying sum equals sum plus input. So those two lines say the same thing. Okay, this is kind of a shortcut. It just means add the input to the sum. So if I enter a 5, the input would be 5, and then sum plus equals that would become, uh, sum would become 5. And then if I add 2, the input would be 2, and plus equals 2 would make it 7. Okay, so it just means to continuously add. Um, this, this actually works for all of the basic operations, so minus equals, times equals, divides equals, modulus equals, they're all the same, they all work like that. Okay, so this one, however, would only do this one time. So what I would do is throw the whole thing into a do while loop. Okay, now, uh, just one thing here. For beginning programmers, I find that it's useful to put these scope brackets like this. Okay, so these brackets are vertically aligned. However, this is not the programming convention. I know a lot of people are going to complain about it, but too bad. Um, the convention in industry and in programming is to generally show it like this. Okay, with the uh, open bracket like that. But I find for debugging, especially for beginning programmers, it's easier for them to show the uh, scope brackets vertically aligned like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say do while, so keep asking keep asking for input, take input, and then add the input as long as the input is greater than or equal to zero. And there we go. Okay, and at the end what we would do is we'd say something like see out the total of all the val of all the inputs was sum. Okay, so something like this. All right, and let's see if this works. Okay, so enter a number, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, type in all the numbers from 1 to 10, which add to 55. Okay, and now I need to signal the computer that I'm done, so what I do is I say negative 1, Okay, and the total of all the inputs was 55. So, seems to have worked. Okay, that's for accumulation, so you can easily add things up. There's a couple things though. Um, one is that these, these values should be declared outside of the loop. Okay, the sum has to be declared outside of the loop because it's used after the loop. If it was declared inside the loop, it would exist from here to here in the code. Okay, so it would exist in this section of code, but not anywhere else, and so it wouldn't be usable over here. 
The input technically could be created inside the loop, but what would happen then is that every time you ran the loop, it would get created, and then when the loop ended, it would get destroyed, and then recreated and destroyed and recreated and destroyed. And so what you're doing is you're getting the computer to do all these extra operations for nothing. And for a simple program like this, it's not going to make that much of a difference, but in some cases, it actually would make a big difference. So just get it created one time, just use it over and over, and then it gets destroyed at the end. Um, okay, so we've seen that this works, um, and that's how you accumulate um, numbers in that way. Okay, the next thing you can do is um, look at a similar thing, which is finding the average. Okay, for the average, um, what we have is uh, a similar thing, but what we have to do is we have to track how many numbers were entered. Okay, and so I'm going to say numbers is equal to zero. Okay, so I'm making a new variable to keep track of how many numbers were actually entered. Okay, and so what I'm going to say is if the input was greater than or equal to zero, I'm going to add that number to the uh, sum, but I'm also going to say numbers plus plus. Okay, so what it does then is it actually keeps track of the number of numbers that have been entered. Okay, and then at the end, what I can do is say the average of all the inputs was, and then I could say sum divided by numbers. Okay, now there is a kind of a problem with this, and I will let's see if we can see what happens here, see if we can see it. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to enter in, let's say, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and so this should give me, uh, well, let's see, negative 5. That's a, a negative number to signal to stop. And it says the average of all the numbers is 5, which kind of makes sense because I have 5 as the middle number, and then between 4 and 6, the average is 5, and 7 and 3, the average is 5, and 8 and 2, the average is 5. So it appears to be working. Um, but... Let's take a look at what happens if I run it again and I use some different values. So let's say I go 2 and 3. Now if I just put those two values, the average should be 2.5. If I just give a negative number, it just says the average was 2. And this is com a common thing that kind of perplexes students um, or new be or beginning programmers because it doesn't seem to make sense why this should happen. And there's something actually inherent to the code that um, is responsible for this. Okay, when I have a sum divided by numbers, what I have is an integer divided by another integer. And when you have an integer divided by another integer, the result is also an integer. Now, the computer, what it will, what it will do is when it has an integer, now when it is trying to display a decimal number as an integer, it just drops the decimal. Okay, it doesn't round, it just drops it. So a 2.9 would become a 2. Right? A 3.87 would become a 3. Okay, so what's happening here is that the computer is, uh, the integer is not able to hold the decimal, so it just gets plainly dropped, right? So the, the 0.5 in this, specific, in this specific example just gets taken away. So the solution to this problem is to do something called casting. And what that is is getting the computer to treat an, a certain type of variable as though it were another type of variable, but only in one instance. And it's fairly simple to do. Um, in this case, what I want to do is I want to get the computer to treat the sum variable, which is an integer, as though it were a double. So what I do is I just, in parentheses, put the word double in front of it. You can see that it becomes bolded and is a C++ keyword. Um, so in this case, what it does, it treats the sum as though it were a double. It knows it's an integer, it just treats it that way just in this one case. And then what I have is a double divided by an integer, which yields a double. And we'll see how that works. Okay, so I have 2, 3, negative 1, and the average is 2.5. Okay, remember it does not uh, count the negative 1. Okay, and so that way we were able to count the average, right? So you can see the accumulation is not much different fr uh, from the average. They just add a few extra things, um, and that's really it. So if you have any questions, uh, please give me a comment in the comment box or send me an email. If you do like the video, then please give me a thumbs up, and if you do like my channel, please consider subscribing.